We are here to start another vlogging project and this is another one of my TBR Redown initiatives where I am really trying to come up with projects to help me, you know, look at my TBR in a new way, make progress on reading down from what I own, and um, my goal, I guess in this angle I can show you that I've already met my yearly goal. So I'm very proud. This top shelf, I wanted to be clear from my TBR shelf. I wanted to read down enough that I had cleared that out. Now granted, I think some of that is just some rearranging that I've been doing for my bookshelves. But to be fair, there are four cubbies in this bookshelf that now don't even hold books anymore. So I, I made some meaningful progress, but we're not gonna let up because I'm sure that I will be bringing books in throughout the year. So I need to maintain the discipline and maintain my focus to keep this to be an achievable outcome by the end of the year. So, you know, it's spring. I've been kind of thinking like, oh, is there a springtime vlog I can do? Oh, well, we're not totally to spring, but we're getting there. Uh, I was at my local bookstore as I am wont to do or want to be at, and I happened to pick up a book that was called Bunny and a book that was called Wolf Gone Wild. There you go. I'm not reading Wolf Gone Wild in this one, but I saw them together and I thought, oh, that's so funny. They both have animals in them. I wonder how many books on my TBR have animals in the title. And that's how we got here. So it's spring. All of our little animal friends are supposed to be coming out of the, the woodwork. And uh, I found six books. I, 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 there were some more, but like, they were sometimes a little bit more of a stretch or they just weren't on my active TBR. They were more my like theoretical TBR of books, like in my, some of my classic collection of books that I'm not like hot to trot to read, but might at some point. So anyway, these were some of my active TBR books and I found six of them with critters in the title. So this is my critter vlog. I'll tell you these books. I'm trying to think of like, what's, what is our outcome going to be from this? Like, Hey, I read these books. I guess that is the outcome. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll try to read them in order, which from like the scariest animal that to be trapped in a room alone with, like if it was wild versus the least scary. That might be kind of a fun <laughs> way to go about this. So I say that because I know the first one I'm going to read just because I'm kind of in the mood for it is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. This is one I've been meaning to read basically since it came out in 2009. And I found this really nice edition of it at McKay's. So that is how I got on my TBR. It is a historical fiction and it's like literary fiction about you know, good old Henry VIII. And it's from the point of view of old what's his face? Uh, Thomas Cromwell. Yeah. So this is supposed to be like meticulously researched, beautifully written. It's a modern classic. So I am expecting I'm going to like this with the caveat that I did just see Leanna last year read this and absolutely tear it to shreds. Now granted, it's Leanna. So, um, you know, she is a woman of very exacting tastes. And so maybe that was just her, but that did, it kind of intrigued me to, even more to pick it up of like, oh, okay, that's like one of the only times I've seen someone not love this, like that a one-off or do I agree? So we'll see, but this is on here. And then um, the one of the books that inspired this whole thing is Bunny by Mona Awad. This is one that has been so popular in the last few years and I just keep meaning to get to it and thought, you know what, now's the time. So it is about this like click of sinister rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one but i think that there's like a woman or a girl who's like trying to come into their click maybe it's like darker than she imagined so i think the vibe i get from this is literary horror so we'll find out I people I've actually seen very few negative reviews of this. I'm sure they're out there, but like amongst people I follow, most people seem to be really into this. And I am, you know, trying to expand my horror vocabulary. And uh, I do like literary fiction tends to work better for me if it has some elements of something weird in it, which I think is what this is. So I'm pretty optimistic that I'm gonna like this. Then we have one of three, oh, I just realized, basically this vlog is half mystery and half some flavor of mystery, half one, some flavor of mystery and half lit fic of some flavor. 
Interesting. Make of that what you will. Raven Black by Ann Cleves. This is a mystery uh, set in a small, I think like northern English village and someone dies, but there's a blizzard and the local, you know, constabulary has to figure out who did it. So very much a me plot, very much a me book. And you know, it's a bird, so that's kind of fun. Then we have a book I did not pick for myself, but my friend Bethany sent me for Christmas from um, an all mystery bookshop in New York City, which was a lovely and thoughtful present. Um, it is Otto Pensler Presents American Mystery Classics. It's that line. And this one is called The Cat's Paw by Roger Scarlett. I actually have no idea what this is about. And I kind of think I should just go, it says in a stately Boston mansion, a killer prowls the hall. There's a cat. That's really, I mean, that sold. You know, cool black cat on the cover. Love that. And let's go into it blind, shall we? That's, th this is all I know about it. And we'll see how we do. But this is a classic mystery and we'll see how it goes. Okay, then we have one that is on my, I have to like read it or unhaul it kind of thing for the year. <laughs> and it's the beginning of a series that I wanna see if I wanna continue in. And that is The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Laurie R. King. This is the first Mary Russell novel. And Mary Russell is a teenage girl who somehow knows Sherlock Holmes and is as brilliant as him and like helps him with his detections, I believe. So it's a, let's call this a historical mystery. And yeah, I am fairly confident that I'm really gonna like this, but time will tell. And if nothing else, this meets my goal of starting this series <laughs> this year, which I really need to do. Okay, last but not least is a classic I just realized I kind of have some like, I, there, should I reorganize how I'm doing this? Because I just realized. So we have modern lit horror, modern history whodunit. We have historical fiction, sort of like contemporary classics in their genres, lit fic, historical lit fic, historical mystery. And then we have a classic mystery versus a classic lit fic which is of Mice and Men, which I've somehow never read, but this was a little edition that my mom gave me a few years ago. And I know, so I kind of know something about Lenny and what's up with him just from the cultural zeitgeist. That's all I know about this, but it's short. So, okay, maybe we should reorganize this. Maybe we'll make this like a, br oh, and it's a cat and a mouse. <gasps> okay, yes, we have to do this head to head. That's so fun. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> reorganizing this. We're gonna see which animals prevail and we're gonna go head to head for each of these and see which animal comes out on top. And the winning animals are my favorites. I don't know. The winning animals we can feel excite excited about and we'll see. Okay, so it's a cat and a mouse. We've got a wolf and a bee. That's kind of fun. And then we've got a bunny and a raven. So place your bets on the books place your bets on the animals and maybe I can come up with some like nonsense scatter plots of like is the <laughs> like is my frightened frightenedness of the animal corresponding in any way to how much I like the book I don't know this is kind of a mess we'll see what happens I don't know let's get on this journey together shall we well we're not quite pulling a Leanna, but we're not not. <laughs> so I am DNFing Wolf Hall. Yeah. So drop that up here. Um, yeah, so I got the audiobook from the library because I was knitting, and that has been like my thing recently is listening to a lot more audio so that I can knit at the same time. So I was trying to get into it and I just like was not vibing. So it's the, it's basically the story of the Tudors, but from the POV of Thomas Cromwell, is kind of an outsider to the court and doesn't have the same like hoity-toity background and like how he kind of comes to the position he's in and then like his POV on all of Henry VIII's shenanigans. But like, there's this weird 
weird, very dry tone to the writing that I am not into. It just feels like a lightly narrativized history. So it doesn't, you know, I've read a lot about the Tudor period over the years. I was a very nerdy child and read my fair share of like stories about Anne Boleyn, like novelization, like the, the other Boleyn girl and all those Alison Weir nonfiction books. I have read a lot of fiction and nonfiction about this. And this is like the least interesting one I've ever encountered. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe like if you're not as familiar with the plot, players it's more interesting. Anyway, I did switch to the physical form to see if I could get on better with that. I read that for like 30 pages to get to 100-ish pages and like I could, I don't hate it. I could keep going, but not for 500 plus pages. Fuck no. I mean, forgive my French, but like, no. Hell to the no, to the no, no, no. Like, no, I'm not. Life is too short and precious <laughs> to just keep listening to something that's only sort of like mad to me. So yeah, I don't hate this like Leanna did, but I totally see what she's saying. And I am hashtag confused about why this is a modern classic. I don't know. So off to an inauspicious beginning here, but I think the Beekeeper's Apprentice doesn't have much that it's, I really, I just have to finish the Beekeeper's Apprentice for it to win. So we'll see. Talk about opposite experiences because this is great. <laughs> So I really love this. The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Laurie King. So it's Sherlock Holmes fan fiction, but it's far and away the best Sherlock Holmes fan fiction I've ever read. It inserts into the Sherlock Holmes universe this concept of this person named Mary Russell, who is a brilliant, precocious young woman well, she starts off as a girl, which we'll get to that because that's important, but becomes a young woman pretty quickly in this book uh, who is very Holmesian. Like she has the same kind of keen powers of observation. He's one of her neighbors in the countryside. And like immediately he's like, oh, here's like this, this girl's on my level. Like she gets it. Yeah. So her parents have both passed. She's living on this farm with her aunt who's controlling and awful, a very bad guardian pre her getting her inheritance. Um, but anyway, she's half Jewish and she wants to study theology at Oxford. So anyway, so that's kind of like the setup. And then her and Holmes get, you know, entwined and he has like a nemesis from the past coming back up and she's kind of caught in the crosshairs. So she's involved in this mystery slash adventure. And it's just the writing is excellent. The writing is so good. The characterization is fantastic. Great banter between Holmes and Mary. Yeah. So the thing, this is the beginning of a series. And part of why I've been meaning to read this was like, oh, I bet I'm going to love this series and I'm going to want to read in it. But my question in my mind had always been, they get married pretty early in the series from what I've been told. I think it's like in the second or third book. And norm, you know, a romance love normally. But the problem is when they meet, Holmes is, I think, 54 and she is 15. And here's the thing, their chemistry is such that if he had met her when she was 20 and he was, what, 60-ish, I actually would have completely bought it and been fine with it. Because like intellectually, they are soulmates. Like she completely sells me on that part. But the ick I have at the fact that he met her when she was a child, <laughs> like I just, it, I just don't think I can get on board with that. So I'm sadly, I don't think gonna continue in the series because it's excellent. I'm giving this four and a half stars. This is fantastic. And I was looking, I do have a um, short story collection in ebook that is I think either 0.5 or 1.5 in the series. So I'll read that because I'm assuming that's like read them get, I just, I don't think I can get over that. That is just too much ick for me. And I, again, I really wish that they had just met when she was like a little bit older and I would completely buy it because they do just, they go together very well. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so, but I give this four and a half. This is, this is fantastic. And this certainly wins the lineup, like a uh, study in contrast between Wolf Hall and this in terms of like historical fiction in two different genres. Um, this is fantastic, four and a half stars.
So I was looking back at my footage and I thought that I'd already recorded a clip for my thoughts on Raven Black, but evidently I didn't slash maybe it was just so bland I forgot even recording it. I don't know, but we're just gonna talk about these two head to head together because I just finished Bunny. <sighs> So <laughs> these books are kind of like polar opposites actually in terms of what their vibe, tone, and audiences <laughs> because this I would say they're both literary um, or like aspiring for kind of like literary versions of their genre. I would say this is horror. I would say this is a mystery. And this one is like competent and fine. And this is like, it has some pit pitfalls to it, but it's so bananas that like the chutzpah of it alone makes it great. So uh, let's, I guess let's just go ahead and finish up with Raven Blacks. I don't have a lot to say about it. I gave it a three. Like I said, it's just, it's okay. It's fine. If you like a isolated community, like an isolated community mystery, there's a police investigator who I believe is the um, investigator we get throughout the series. This is the first book. There's this dude named Magnus, this old guy, and he every year at New Year's Eve opens up his house hoping that he'll have guests. They never come. I'm surmising that this is some sort of British tradition where you like go around and say Happy New Year to everyone. I don't know, not been my experience, but if so, I think that's like a lovely idea. But anyway, finally, these two drunk girls show up like for the first time he's had, like this is the first time he's had visitors in years and he becomes very fixated on the one who has this dark hair. And then like, I think the next day or the day after she's found dead and he's under suspicion. So Inspector Perez is here and he's trying to like, figure out what happened. It's a perfectly good murder mystery. I would have DNF this if it wasn't this genre, but like I can have a perfectly good time with this kind of book. Not memorable to me, but also like it was a fine way to pass time. So like, okay, that's whatever. So three stars, I will never think about this book again. <sighs> Bunny I will think about for years to come <laughs> because it is so strange. I do, so I don't wanna tell you a lot about the plot of this one because it's pretty much what I believe I described in our intro, which is, or like what you should know about this is what I described in the intro, which is there is this academic setting and there's these like kind of clicky group of, of women who all call each other bunny and it's a new girl being brought into their circle and like, why is she being brought in? Like, what is their deal, etc. That's all you should know, I think, about this going in, other than that it is weird literary horror so that you have a sense of the kinds of things you might encounter in terms of like graphicness or whatever. This is so, like it has such highs and lows. There are moments in this book that are amazing. Like the first, the workshop, for those of you who've read the book, that first, whatever, obsessed. But then it's also, it's like, this is not a boring book, but there were moments in the pacing of it that I was bored. So that kind of weighs against it. But the moments where I was engaged, I was very engaged. This is a sati like satire, I think, of sort of sad girl lit fic and sort of a satire of da dark academia. And all of that was great. Um, our main point of view character, Samantha, is such a sad sack and she's so annoying <laughs> to be in the head of, but in a completely purposeful way. Like I felt like the author was in control of how much I did not like Samantha. So I, I appreciated that. And yeah. So like part of me wants to give this a five, part of me wants to give it a two. I don't know. <laughs> so I think I'm going to give it a four uh, because this was just interesting. I think if you had the right group of people, if they were down, like you would, this is not one I would bring up to like work book club, but if you have the right group of friends, I think this would be an amazing book club pick because it's so bananas and interesting. So like I could see people hating it and that being a good discussion or people loving it and that being a good discussion. There's a lot it's doing metaphorically metaphorically with like the concept of like womanhood and girlhood um, and women's agency. Yeah, this is a super worthwhile read. And I guess I'm gonna give it four stars, though I do think I will, it will linger in my mind. So this makes me more curious to pick up more from Mona Awad, though 
I think I will use the people who love her to tell me if it's one that I should pick up because even I've seen people who love this book and love her even admit that some of her books are boring. And this one was like on the verge of that for me in terms of like, this would be better as a novella versus a novel. So if even people who love her think that about a book, I think I will steer clear. But if I am getting indicators that there's another bunny from her that's out there, I will pick that up because this was an experience for sure. So in this head to head, the bunny definitely is kicking the raven's ass. Bunny prevails. Yeah, I don't remember where we are editing of this video, like sequence wise, so I won't comment on, a, you know, how that does or doesn't align with the pattern that I've seen. But yeah, this inspired the video and is so definitely the most memorable book so far. All right, so we have the first book in our classics matchup, and that is The Cat's Paw by Roger Scarlet. Okay, so I did not choose this book for myself. It was a gift from my friend Bethany. She got it from the mysterious bookstore. Also check out this legit ass house map. Oh, anytime I see that. It is a positive sign. It's like the same feeling it gives me when I open up a fantasy book and there's a map. I would not have picked this for myself, but I guess spoilers for my thoughts. I'm so glad she picked this for me because I thought it was great. It's a very of its time kind of murder mystery puzzle. And it is very much set up as a puzzle. Uh, it's quite meta, especially for its time. I don't know, well, I say that. It's interesting because I do think this sort of like meta textual fourth wall breaking element that's been kind of in the last few years in mystery thriller type big books is both like a new thing, but also kind of almost hearkening back to the OG days of the, of the genre because the, the genre started off being much more straightforwardly puzzle based in a lot of cases. Like there were a lot of authors in sort of the golden age that were much less concerned with the writing components of these stories and much more concerned with like making a good puzzle for you to solve. And I think that this book, and I will definitely read more from Roger Scarlet if I come across him, I think this book does a really nice job of sort of like splitting the difference of those two kinds of impulses of like, I want to give you a puzzle versus I want to tell you an interesting story that's well written. The writing in this I think is much nicer than some of the more puzzle based classic mysteries of this era that I've read. So I really appreciated that. Apparently this Inspector Kane is a recurring detective for this guy and I would read more from him. So he's got his kind of Watson character who I think was called Underwood. And then he's got these two sort of like goofy sergeants named Moran and McBeath who go and kind of like do the, you know, grubby clue digging up and then he <laughs> solves it. But it's like a classic, um, like everybody's in a house together, like a bunch of rich people, loathsome patriarch or matriarch of the family is dangling money in front of everyone and that ends up getting them killed. Yeah, so that, I mean, it's kind of a typical setup, but I thought the characters were interesting and pretty well drawn. Like I said, I thought the writing particularly was very nice. So yeah, and actually there's a great introduction that I very much enjoyed reading by by Curtis Evans. I read that afterwards. It always kind of makes me laugh when they put introductions at the beginning of these kinds of books. I'm like, they really should be sort of like afterwards because they, I don't know. Sometimes they spoil, sometimes they don't. But in general, I think you appreciate them more if you read it afterwards. But I enjoyed the like history of the genre bit in that introduction. And apparently Roger Scarlet, according to this introduction, is very well known for these floor plans I'm all about. So yeah, this was a big success, especially for a mystery I did not pick for myself. Bethany killed it, <laughs> pun. Um, and I'm gonna give The Cat's Paw four stars. I thought this was great. Very entertaining, well-written, looking for more from this author. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'm just gonna finish off this matchup and go ahead and read Of Mice and men tonight because it's so short. So we'll see if I make that happen. But cat was the first one and mice slash mouse is its matchup in the classics category. So I did it. I went ahead and finished this off tonight too. 
so that our matchup of classics is complete. And I was kind of surprised at how moved I was by this. Um, I had heard the kind of like point of the story or the ending of it or whatever. It's not like it's super long and at least here in the US, I'm one of the rare students who escaped my K through 12 education without having to read this. So you know, it's enough a part of the zeitgeist. I had a vague notion of what happens, but um, actually reading it, it's very moving. It's a very grim little novel <laughs> about um, impoverished farm laborers in California. So it's pretty bleak. <laughs> it's, I would not call this an uplifting read. But yeah, it packs the punch. And definitely makes me more interested in Steinbeck because I hated Grapes of Wrath when I read it in high school. Yeah, hated it. And I re in reading this, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm remembering why in a novel I did not like this. But I think in short story form or like novella length, I think that's a better dosage of Steinbeck for me. So I'm also going to give this four stars. And I'm honestly, I'm kind of torn. Like I had a stronger emotional reaction to this. But Cat's Paw, I think, I mean, like this is a classic. It's so widely taught and read that I kind of expect it to be good versus Cat's Paw was a little more like surprising how much I liked it. So I'm kind of inclined to give this to Cat's Paw even though I would not argue it's a better book. I just, I think I'm more impressed by it holistically. So I think I'm gonna give it to the cat. Also that's on brand for me. So that feels right. So we'll give it to Cat's Paw. All right, so rounding this all up, what have we found? Well, yeah, actually kind of interesting. So we have, oh man, there's so many different ways to slice and dice this. I'm like a little bit of analysis paralysis here. Okay, so, so we had a matchup where both were great and one just sort of eked it out over the other. We had a matchup where there was one that was decidedly better than the other, but neither were horrible. And then we had one that was amazing and one was DNF not for me. So yeah, so in that sense, very different. In terms of who prevailed, I think it's fair to say that for all of the winners in their matchup, they are the animal I would have preferred. Like if I came home one day and found one of the these animals in my house, I would prefer to find a bee over a wolf. I would prefer to find a bunny over a raven. And I would even prefer to find a random cat over a mouse. So there's that. Uh, in terms of mystery versus lit fic or sort of general fiction, the mystery did win, but it was two to one. And I would say of Mice and Men, like I know I technically picked Cat's Paw, but like that was really a toss up. So honestly, in quality wise, about evenly split. So yeah, this was a fun little exercise and a good way to find some books to read off of my TBR. And one very big hit and two, like really three excellent reads. So yeah, let's call this one a big success and a good way to kick off spring because I think spring has truly sprung. I will say I'm waiting for us to have one last. Usually here in Tennessee, we get to March and you think it's spring and then you have one last like snow or like really cold week. We haven't had that yet, but tentatively I think we can say spring has sprung. I continue to just like rock and roll on this TBR read down. I am really enjoying that this year and I've got a few other, well not a few, I have many other ones <laughs> coming at you um, of like projects that I'm working on for my TBR read down. So keep an eye out for that. But with that being said, let me know what you thought about any of the books I talked about. If you've read them, let me know if you have other ideas for TBR read down themes. Like I said, I definitely have some going, but I welcome other ideas because it is feeling very good. I saw somebody had a comment of like, this this TBR read down is giving very, we have food at home energy, which I love that. And that's exactly it of like, I got books at home. I got to read the books that I've already picked out for myself and I'm really enjoying it. It's going really well. So um, yeah, turns out reading things I already picked out that I might like is a great strategy for enjoying what I'm reading. <laughs> but anyway, let me know if you have other ideas of ways to like pick books from my TBR. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye!
Thank you.